Hmm. So my message, Nick. You messaged me. Yeah. What's up? <clears throat> CG looking sharp. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, Tim. Tim, Tim, Tim. Yeah. Can you forward Geshela the link one more time? Uh, the panelist link. Uh, that would. I've got it open. I can do it right, real quick. Oh, I think he should have his own panelist link, right? He right. does. I, I can't. Oh. Let me try. Hey, good boy. Sagey's text. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we're starting with the best text. Well. I don't know Wait if I a minute. That far. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, just resent him the email. Okay. Wow, a tie clip in everything, Sagey. Jeez. Tie clip. <laughs> That's Is true that a business professional. Chinese painting in the in the background. You in the back. See, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh like four forty five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, we got a bed like five. Um, I don't know. We'll see how this works. <laughs> I might. <clears throat> Thanks for the money. Good morning, Geshela. Good morning, Geshela. Morning, boss. Uh, uh, good morning. morning. I guess left. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Good morning, guys. Nice Who's the big A? <laughs> I don't know. We have to make that stop happening that it won't uh, shift to that. I guess we can spotlight you guys. Yeah, so 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 what we need to do, Nick, is is once Geshla shares his screen, um, mm -hmm. all non-video panelists will be hidden. And okay. we, won't, we won't need to spotlight anyone, and then I'll control the recording from this side. Okay. Um, again, to share your screen, there's just the yeah. middle bottom button. It says share so screen. On the bottom, yeah, where it says share screen. And then it's gonna, so if you have the, if you have the text open on a different desktop, uh -huh. it'll, uh, Zoom will give you the option of what it is that you wanna share. I think I got it. Here. Cool, cool, cool. Is that okay? Uh, it's not sharing yet. So you have to hit share screen and then it'll give you the option of which document you have open that you want to be sharing. And then you can select the Sagey's. It's showing the one I want and then I should just hit return. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it. Now it's, here yeah. it's up. Did it work? Yeah. It did. Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe we just need Sagey's floating head to appear as well. So to do that, you're going to have to choose gallery view, Nick. Oh, OK. And, and, and this is for everyone attending. Oh, perfect. Um, if you select gallery view at the top right-hand corner, you'll be able to see the two speakers, Geshe Michael and Sagey. And then if, if you would like to hear Chinese interpretation during this, at the bottom of your screen, there's a button that says interpretation. If you click on that and switch the language to Chinese, you'll then be able to hear our Chinese translator this morning, Isabel. Thanks, Isabel. Stan Stanley, do you want to just re repeat that in Chinese real quick? In case I, I, 
<laughs> oh, that that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim, you said they can click something in the right, right at the bottom language channel. Right, right. At the interpretation. It says interpretation. There's a button at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like a little globe. Got it. Uh, 各位中文的观众，如果大家想要选择中文翻译的话，请在呃右下角有一个传译的那个按钮。那个传译的按钮是一个小地球的样子，在传译按钮当中选择。中文频道，然后就可以听到，待会上课的时候就可以听到中文的翻译了。我们会有为大家准备专门的中中文翻译。Got it. Thank you, Stanley. I just want to say welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming to the first online Diamond Cutter Classics Translation Program Mixed Nuts Translation Program Term. <laughs> Woohoo! And people are still rolling in, little by little. Ah.、Uh, But you know, we got a pretty big group. I think we're looking around 200 people listening around the world, at least,、uh, and more people registered last night. So we don't have total numbers. It's going to be a little over that, I guess. Cool. And、uh, not much to else to say, but、uh, we're very lucky to have the world's master Tibetan translator,、uh, Geshe Michael Roach. So this is. There's never, there's no program like this in the world where we get to learn directly、uh, from somebody who went through what Geshe Michael has gone through to train, and his level of mastery is unlike anybody else in the world, and、uh, it's amazing. And you don't get these kind of teachings in in any environment other than I think in like very specific places in South India now. <laughs> so、uh, we're pretty lucky to have this opportunity. So thank you, Geshe Michael. Thank you, and thanks for being the director of the mixed nuts, the big nut.、Uh, so uh, let's start. Uh, uh, Nick, what time do I stop? Just so I know. Fifty-seven、uh, fifty-five. Okay, good. Here we go. So welcome to the mixed nuts translation class. You know, I woke up at three、uh, o'clock last night. I couldn't sleep for a couple of hours、uh, because. I was thinking what to tell you guys at the beginning, so you don't run away.、Uh, so uh, this class is like nothing else in the world. I think Nick. I think it's true. I don't think there's anything like this in the whole world. And I always think about、uh, Master Xuanzang, a Chinese master who lived、uh, 1,300 years ago during the Tang. Dynasty in China, he walked to India.、Uh, some people say 17 years, some people say 19 years, and he learned all the great books. And I don't know how he carried them all home, probably on a donkey、uh, or a horse. And、uh, he brought back roughly a thousand books. And and then the emperor of China gave him a tower. Called the Wild Goose God, I guess, and I've been there, and、uh, it's a beautiful tower in the middle of Chang. The old name is Chang'an, Xi'an, and it's just amazing. The vibrations in that tower are amazing. Where he sat with his students, and they translated like a thousand books, and really、uh, Chinese Buddhism comes from that. So it, it, there were earlier translators, but really it was his team that spread this wisdom、uh, to to what's now the largest nation in the world, 1.4 billion people. And、uh, so I feel like we're in a similar position. You know,、uh, I I spent I don't know 45 years finding、uh, the best. Uh, translators I could find the best、uh, people I could find to to train as translators, and、uh, I'm going to ask Nick that you introduce them in a minute, okay?、Uh, yeah. And and I was just it took me really it took me over 40 years to find these guys、uh, and girls, and they are amazing translators. They are amazing、uh, intellect. Uh, intelligence and also amazing in the spiritual way,、uh, inside. And、uh, so we are having fun.、Uh, 
uh, we have, we're working on about 20 of the greatest books uh, in all time. And uh, we've been working for th three years now, I almost said 300 years, but three years. Uh, we've done over 600 classes and uh, we, we're reaching some very beautiful places in these great books. And these books, they are from every great school of Buddhism. So Buddhism is 2,500 years old in this world. And people have been writing books for 2,500 years. And, and we took the best books. Uh, we went through and we took the best books uh, out of those. Uh, I would say there's about 300,000 important books in Buddhism. And John Brady's project, the ACIP, and I'd like to welcome all the ACIP team, uh, the Asian Legacy Library, uh, ALL team. And I'd like to thank them uh, for their hard work. They have, uh, and we have also Jeff Wallman, uh, who joined us from TBRC, BDRC. And they have saved together, they have saved, I don't know, like 20 million pages of, of great books. Uh, they have been typing them in for 33 years input project and uh, it's online for free so all these great books uh, our goal is to finish 300,000 uh, great books uh, we have finished I don't know maybe 15,000 something like that and uh, I would say we have another 150 years to go five generations of people have to help and we can finish uh, digitalizing all these books, finding them and digitalizing them. And then I think it will take about 700 years to translate all of them. And this is the beginning. And uh, I'm happy to be here at the beginning because uh, we took the best books. Uh, we took all the best books. So we are working on the 20 best books from Buddhism. And you know, I have many friends uh, who look at what we do. They look at all the time we spend and they say, why you spend so much time on, on these books, you know, uh, this is not inner development, you know, this is just scholarship, you are, you know, studying these ancient languages, you are reading old books. And many, many people said to me, oh, these old books, they are so confusing. Uh, they are so difficult. Uh, they, they are so complicated. Uh, can't we just uh, sit down uh, on the meditation cushion and meditate? And, uh, you know, I did that for almost 50 years. And I also did a three year uh, silent retreat. I finished uh, in 2003 uh, in, a, in one room uh, with no toilet, no electricity, very cold, very hot. And, uh, so I, I can say from my own experience uh, that if you want to meditate uh, or if you want to develop compassion or bodhicitta, uh, you need a background in these books. When you listen to these books, uh, it does something to your mind. It changes your mind. Even if you don't want it, uh, it will change your mind. Okay, And even if you don't understand it, it will change your mind. And uh, there's a tradition in the monastery uh, that is very interesting, you know. We, the Geshe course is about 20, 25 years long. So we have first year students, second year students, third year students. My class, we had 60 people in the first year. And in the 23rd year, we had uh, four people left. And, uh, and then we became Geshe. Uh, but there's an interesting tradition that they will take the third year student and each week for one hour or two hours, they should go to the 10th year class and sit in the class. Okay? Wow. So you're talking about like teenager, like 18 year old, 19 year old monk. He has to go sit in with the 30 year olds or the 40 year olds. And they have been studying Geshe course for 10 years or, or longer, sometimes 18 years. And then the new kid has to sit in the class for 
two, three hours every week. It's required. And uh, I can say, because I did it, uh, you don't have any idea what they're talking about. Not, not one word, you know. They are talking, uh, wordsmith is yelling at Ben Kramer, and Ben Kramer is uh, arguing with Nick Lash, uh, and Sage is trying to get them to be peaceful. And uh, they are yelling about some strange Tibetan idea, some ancient Buddhist idea that's 2,000 years old. And I can say, I can say that I, I know there's 100 or 200 people listening in the first class. And uh, I think after three days, there will be 50 uh, or maybe 20. I don't know. This is very difficult uh, class, very difficult material. When I teach at DCI, when I teach in Lamrim, when I teach Wheel of Life, uh, really, I'm making it simple. And it's good, it's very deep and it's very beautiful. But, but in this class, um, with these 10 great translators, uh, we are going very, very deep and uh, we are not going to try to make it easy for you. Uh, we are going to just go, you know, a 10th year class, this is a 10th year class. And I don't want you to get discouraged, okay? I want you to keep listening, uh, just open, your ears open your mind and let the let the ideas come in and and the foreign words let them touch your mind and uh, something will happen to your mind okay and i can say that from i've been doing this almost 50 years and uh, i do this every morning i study things i don't understand every morning and i swim in those great books and uh, it changes my mind you know it really really changes my mind uh, yesterday uh, we were building a new part of our cafe so you know and i'm using the knowledge from the ancient books i had a meeting with uh, some architects and construction company plumbing company and i'm in the middle of arizona you know <laughs> I want to show you my, my house. So I, I live on this mountain. And, uh, and the people around here, they are mostly cowboys. Uh, they are not uh, Buddhist ancient book scholars. And the, all the construction guys are tough guys. And, but because I study in the guard, you know, uh, I have successful cafe. Okay, and I have a successful business. That's just an extra business. We have, I don't know, 15 businesses. But uh, what I mean is just open your mind, uh, sit through the class. Uh, you, if you get tired, have some coffee, um, you know, eat something that you enjoy. I can't see you. And, uh, and just have fun. And don't get so serious, okay? Modern people, in the school, they want to understand everything. You know, they, they want, they study for one week, then the teacher gives them a quiz, and then they pass the quiz, then they forget everything, then they study another week and they have a quiz. This is not like that, okay? This is not like that. Uh, it will take you years to understand half of what we are saying, okay? But be brave, have courage, okay? This, these books are like, I don't know, these books are like an atomic missile. It goes deep into your mind uh, and it changes your mind and it changes your heart and, uh, and you, you become a different person. Uh, so please uh, don't think this is like a university. Don't think it's like the school that you went to, it's not. Uh, it will be very confusing and it will be very uncomfortable. And you will, you will say, I don't understand anything. And that's because it's deep, okay? So we're giving you something very, very deep. And if you are brave, if you have courage, uh, if you stay and listen, uh, your mind will change completely. And not just uh, spiritually, but um, you know, if you wanna build a, a cafe, uh, a great cafe, uh, you can do it because your mind was changed. Uh, you can do anything 
uh, you can have a beautiful family, uh, beautiful marriage. Uh, you can have everything if you put this atomic missile in your mind, okay? So be brave, uh, just turn it on every morning. And I guess we're doing in the evening also in our time. And, and don't get scared and don't run away, okay? We are operating on your brain. Seiji is going to operate on your brain and your heart today. And, uh, and be brave and, and don't, don't run away, okay? Don't say, oh, I, I, this is not for me, okay? If you stay, it will change your heart. It will change your mind. Okay. All right. We're going to start Seiji's class. Uh, Seiji, well, first, Nick, would you like to introduce the translators briefly? And Seiji, I'm going to ask you to talk about your text after that. All right. Uh, so just to uh, let you know who you're dealing with here, um, the mixed nuts, I'll introduce us. First of all, this is Seiji Arau Takahashi, who is originally from Guadalajara, Mexico, and now lives in Sedona, Arizona right now. And he helps run the programs for the Sedona College of International Management, where we usually have our translation program. And he also helps to coordinate uh, events and many other things for Diamond Cutter Institute. Uh, you know, most of you are familiar with that organization. And he's just an all around great guy. And my very good friend and let's see if you're wearing uh, if you want to just show your face real quick while i introduce you even if you're wearing your pajamas just do a nice <laughs> face shot hey you're supposed uh, to be wearing a tie <laughs> or a dress <laughs> um so a venerable i mean sorry that's greer hi bets uh, also a very good friend of mine she's um Went to Harvard, an incredible writer, editor, one of the smartest people I know, intimidatingly so, and uh, a great translator of Tibetan, incredible understanding, very, very humble person, and used to work for Microsoft, and uh, is a hippie at heart. <laughs> and yeah, I'll I'm a dead Buddhist, as they say. Uh-huh. <laughs> Grateful dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let's see who's next. Sorry? Oh, how come I can hear the Chinese? Maybe that's, oh, Allison Joe, our next translator. Wow, and always in very fancy surroundings. Uh, She's a very, very kind and wonderful person. Um, amazing. She and her partner run a translation program to ch translate these books and other material from Chinese into English. I mean, from English into Chinese. And there's Stanley Chen, her partner, and he also runs that. They have a company. I'm talking fast. This is probably hard for the translator. I'll slow down. They have a company called Future Diamond, uh, Pure Gold Translation and another company called China Soft Power. So they're doing a lot of really amazing things to help the ideas that we're learning here in the mixed nuts uh, spread across Asia. And they're both translating great books that you'll see soon. So thank you guys. Um, Adam Andrade, are you here, Adam? get a brief glimpse of your head if he wants to show up. Adam is a, <clears throat> uh, a mountain climber, outdoor extreme activity guy, uh, also a brilliant logician, brilliant uh, translator, and a father, and an all around good guy, and he's eating a banana. <laughs> so thank you for showing up. And his book is on logic, and you will soon see uh, how tough it is. I'm just going to close the door because my daughter got upset <laughs> early. Uh, wordsmith, also one of the smartest people I know, uh, a doctor of Chinese medicine, uh, as well as a yogi, and 
really great translator. He's super fascinated by languages, Tibetan, Sanskrit, and probably many others. He knows some Chinese, Spanish, German. And uh, he, we call him the human computer because he doesn't forget anything. Uh, he hears it once and it's programmed into his memory forever. And it's unbelievable <laughs> and uh, terribly frustrating because he's quick to answer all the questions before any of us can even open our mouths. And now there's the race to the unmute button as well. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, ben Kramer. Uh, also one of the smartest guys I know. You better hope you don't ever catch yourself on the debate ground around him. He'll tear apart everything that you thought you believed. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, but he's a really great guy, one of my best friends. And uh, one of the smartest uh, translators here, even though he pretends he doesn't know anything. And he's translating a book on comparative philosophy. And uh, it's really fascinating stuff. Who else am I? Oh, Su Gang Shi. <laughs> uh, Mr. Su Gang is uh, from Indonesia, but living, he's sing Chinese Singaporean, grew up in Indonesia and right now in Singapore, right? Yeah, Singapore. Yeah. And uh, a really, really smart guy. He didn't study any Tibetan or any um, ancient languages as far as I know. He joined our team and all of a sudden he knows more than all of us. And uh, I don't know how he did that so fast. And he's translating a book on the lower middle way and specifically about the wheel of life. So it relates, those of you who've been studying the Lam Rim, you'll be very interested to pay attention to his book. And uh, Su Gang's a father of children who are now in college. So three kids. So now he has time to work on Tibetan. <laughs> so anybody I'm missing? I don't think so. I'm, uh, I'm Nick and I'm the director of the Mixed Nuts and uh, I'm overworked. Uh, <laughs> got a kid. New baby, new dog, new house, new yoga studio. So, trying to. Virus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Geshe Michael, we have already introduced. Okay. So thank you, Geshe. Okay, let's go. Uh, we're studying. Uh, Seiji, would you like to talk a few minutes about your text? Just introduce your text, to everybody. Sure. Thank you, uh, everyone, for coming. We're very excited. I hope that you guys fall in love with this text as all of us have. This is a very special text for me. It's um, most of the texts here are uh, deal more with logic. And the special thing about this text is that it, it's a Lojong text. And the main, the main purpose of this text is to help us develop what we call bodhicitta, which is ultimate love and compassion for everyone. The main thing being uh, getting rid of our self-cherishing which is always uh, taking care of ourselves first before other people. So this text, it's really cool because it's also, um, it's not actually a text, it's a transcript of a class, of a 10 session, 11 session class um, given by a teacher called Trichin Tempa Rabge. And this was, so the, the Tibetan in this text is more, um, it's not as formal, it's more like spoken Tibetan. And it's really cool because it's a commentary on a beautiful text called The Crown of Knives. And on top of being a Lojong, it's really cool because it has a karmic correlation. So uh, it's really, really cool. The, the author of the, the teacher of this class was amazing. And uh, yeah, I hope you, you really like it. <laughs> Thanks, Neji. Uh Okay, when we start a new term, uh, I like to uh, let everybody know uh, how far we reached. And now I have a very special... Okay, I like to let you know how far we've come and how far we have to go. So here's our progress report. Uh, Nick, is the screen okay? Everybody can see the screen? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, good. So here's the progress report. We have finished 110 pages, uh, which is uh, 35 folios in the old way, in the palm leaf way. Uh, so we have finished uh, 
since Seiji began, we have finished uh, 10 folio faces, which is uh, 18 pages. And uh, maybe we can finish uh, 20 more pages in this term. And we will reach page 130 in his text. There are 211 pages in the text. So we have 81 pages left to go. And I predict we will finish in four more terms. So we can finish one year from now. Uh, we will finish the last text, the last class for Seji's text. And then I, I don't think all of you guys realize, uh, I, I know Utpa Betz understands, but uh, there are 23 steps uh, that have to be taken after we finish the last class. So there are 23 different steps that come between the last class and the book in your hand, okay? So and that takes time. It takes money. It takes a lot of work. It takes intense amount of work. So you'll be seeing that, um, you know, this book, the classes will finish in one year. And I'm guessing it would take at least six months to, to publish the book after that. It's a long process. Uh, but then the book comes out. Uh, we just put out the uh, a, a Heart Sutra commentary, uh, which is very exciting. So our team has finished two books already. Uh, one is a commentary to the Diamond Cutter Sutra. One is a commentary to the Heart Sutra. And really, those two sutras are the two most important sutras in Buddhism. So we're thinking to, uh, we will offer the two books uh, on, you can find them on, on Amazon and other places. Uh, the Diamond Cutter Commentary is already on Amazon uh, and you can see it there. Okay, Seiji, your text is 40,893 words in the Tibetan. And that tells us that your English book, after we finish, will be about 635 pages. So if you cannot understand the book, you should still buy it because it's very useful to put your computer up higher when you're making a Zoom call. Uh, Seiji's translation will be enough to get your computer up pretty high uh, on the Zoom call. Okay. All right. Uh, and the way we do the class is that we ask the translator to read the Tibetan. And, you know, I have put in my notes uh, for when, when I'm teaching this to the translator and to you guys, I put in notes for myself. So uh, you, I'm sorry, Seiji, there's a lot of notes in this first paragraph, but please read. And uh, we're going to ask, uh, I guess, Ben Kramer to uh, yell at you if you don't pronounce something uh, well. So Ben, you might want to turn on your Sit up straight, Seiji. Okay. <laughs> okay, Seiji, go. Here's the real class, you guys. Okay. Shedang Shetang Dikapsu Konkin to Chepale Chune Kya Mong Mun Dorje Chang Ni Ni Nar Vasar Cha 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 Che Sokshintu Trempe Kone Kapcheki Tugner Setsu Kyang Shung. So, okay, cool. So, as you uh, new people can see, uh, you know, by the way, we're not using Tibetan letters, we're using the Roman letters, which exactly show the Tibetan letters. But you can already see that there's a lot of silent letters in Tibetan, so you're going to have to get used to that. Don't run away. Don't get scared. Don't turn off your computer right now. Uh, just sit, open your mind, some cool stuff. Okay. So shedang means uh, we are. We've just had a new verse of this ancient book, which a thousand years ago was given to Atisha, the the first great teacher. Uh, one of the first great teachers to come to Tibet from India. And uh, his teacher, Rakshita, right, uh, wrote this poem for him because he said, look, you're going to be there for years. It's going to be, you have to walk over the Himalaya mountains. This is going to be difficult for you. Okay. And the last, uh, well, we don't have to talk about the last line. Let's keep going ahead. Dikapsu Kongi Kindu. So it's important, you guys, to say Kindu. Please say Kindu. 
CJ Kinder. 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 Okay, good. Heavy prenasal here. Uh, ki, ki means uh, kipo, means uh, happy. Okay, very, very common word for happy. It's a very uh, common for a woman's name in Tibet to call deki, which means uh, happiness and happiness. Okay, uh, so kong means uh, in the previous verses, we talked about kinda. And I went back and checked uh, the lines. They're talking about when you're young, you know, you usually spend all your time trying to get girlfriends or trying to, you know, get some alcohol that your parents don't want you to have. Or, you know, you go into the nightclubs. When you're young, uh, your main job is kinder, is to just have a good time. Okay, kinder means have a good time. Uh, Chepele, tr, tr means, uh, okay, $20 bet. Who can guess tr? Elaboration, emanation. Wait, what is the first part? Elaboration, emanation. Or yeah, you can say that, but Nick had a famous tr in the beginning of his book. Extension. Yeah, good. So, Allison, you're going to use my credit card. Yes. Right? Yes, uh, I'll take care. Yeah, during the whole time. You're yeah. gonna, yep, you're going to pay yes. these guys from my credit card. Okay? Yes, yes, so I'll take care of it. Probably by, uh, I guess, PayPal or something like that. Okay. Yes. Uh, Please send so me we'll your PayPal account. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. If you don't send your PayPal account to Allison after three days, the money goes to Geshe Michael. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So those of you who are new to our translation class, I, I like gambling. I like to make bets with my uh, colleagues, uh, the 10 translators. I say, boy, you, can you guess what this word means? And if it's a difficult word, I will put some money on it. Usually word is always guessing the word correctly because his name is word. But in this case, uh, Xiaoping, it's Nick, okay, uh, $20. Yes. For my niece, okay? She's not my grand niece, she's my niece. Okay. So, tr means, tr here means, look, we had a line above that talked about having a good time when you're a young person, okay? That we had a line above, and the speaker, who, who's that, Seiji? The, the teacher. Yeah, the Lama giving the lecture. Tichen Tembarabge. Tichen means big throne, so he was a high lama. And by the way, he's very famous. He's a great writer from, I don't know, Seiji, like the 150 years ago, we can say something like that. Uh, and so he, he stopped his teaching and he said, you know, I wanna say something more about having a good time when you're young, okay? Tr means he went back to that line and now somebody, is mentioning kyabgun. Kyabgun is a word used for a very high teacher. Kyab means protector, like the three jewels. And gun also means protector. So kyab means uh, protects us. It's related to the word kyab in logic, which means to cover, right? And then gun means um, a protector, okay? Even like a protector, uh, spiritual protector. And then he says dorji chang. Uh, what's that mean, Seiji? Dorji Chang. The holder of the diamond, right? Good. What's it in Sanskrit, you guys? Okay, there's two Dorji Changs, okay? Lakna Dorji. Say Lakna Dorji. Okay. Everybody say Lakna Dorji, even if you're listening at home. Okay. Lakna Dorji means you have a Vajra or you have a Dorji in your hand. So we will call you Vajrapani, okay? Uh, who has a diamond in their hand, okay? But here we have Dorje Chang, which is holder of the diamond, which means what? In Sanskrit, uh, Vajradhara, okay? Vajradhara. Okay. Now, Vajradhara is a very loaded word. It's a very, it has a lot of important meanings because this is the appearance that Lord Buddha took to teach the higher teachings to teach the secret teachings, to teach Vajrayana, uh, Buddha always takes the appearance of Dorje Chang, of Vajradhara. Uh, so who is Vajradhara here? 
Say the teacher. Yeah, the teacher, Chi Chen Tembanabge, the person giving the talk. And not only is he Vajradhara, but for $20, why me? Why me? Who can guess? Himself. $20. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Ben Kramer, right? Yes, sir. I got to learn to recognize your guys' voices. Uh, yeah, me here means he's the real thing. He was the real thing. He, I'm not just calling him Vajradhara because uh, he's my teacher. He is, he, he's Vajradhara himself. So the Nhi means Vajradhara himself. He was the real Vajradhara, okay? By the way, Tongba Nhi means what? Emptiness. Yeah, emptiness. So that Nhi means ness. In Sanskrit, it's ta, long ta. Okay, okay. So our teacher, uh, he went back to that line about having a good time when you're young, right? Like going to the nightclubs and, and looking for girls and stuff like that, which I did, okay? Because I became a monk when I was 30, 31, I think. So, okay. Ngar means what, you guys? Before. Ngar. Before, yeah. What's chasa? Monkhood. Monk place, monastery. Yeah, monk place. It means a monastery, okay? And this R is in the monastery. Shuk is the polite word for ne. What's that? Stay, Stay there. Yeah. Or be there. Yeah. Kap means uh, in those days when he was... Okay, so the speaker is saying, look, I know Dhamma Rakshita is talking about having a good time when you're young. Kindu, right? Looking for a good time. But where was I when I was young, okay? When I was sitting in the monastery and I was 20 years old, was I chasing girls? Uh, no. Now let's skip to the middle of this line. Temba, okay? Say temba. temba. Don't be lazy at home. I can see your mouth, okay? I can't hear anything, but temba. Say temba. Temba. Yeah, temba means uh, combo. What's combo? Wordsmith. Combo. Hungry. Rare. Rare. Like rare three is the coin chok sum, right? The three jewels. So temba means rare. And sulche is the polite word for food, okay? It's in, in impolite word is kala. But the polite word is sulche, okay? Sulche is a very, very polite word. So the sulche was shin to temba. What's that? Scarce. Scarce. Yeah, you know, you guys were out looking for nightclubs and girls. I was in the monastery trying to get, you know, breakfast. We didn't have any food, okay? And by the way, my monastery was the same, okay? It was, food was scarce, I guess, in his time also. Uh, they didn't have enough food, okay? Gone, and I wasn't having kindu. I wasn't having a good time. I was having kache. Who knows kache? Uh, difficult. Uh, yeah. Difficult, difficult activity. Yeah, yeah, I was having a hard time. I was having a hard time because there wasn't enough food to eat for the monks, you know? Uh, and I had to took nyer. Nyer means to, you guys know the word because dundu nyerwa, you know, means uh, aspire to a high spiritual goal. But Tugnir here is a very high language, meaning our Lama was looking for food. You know, he talked about how he was looking for food. Ze means he did that. Su means how he was doing that. Kyang means, Kyang Sung means he also talked about that. Okay. So this tr means he went off on a story. Okay. And old Lamas, Lamas who get old, they start telling stories about their life over and over. Sometimes they tell the same story like 10 times. They forget who they told the story to. So I want to apologize if I did that. Like in the Lam Rim, I probably did that, okay? So anyway, there's the whole paragraph, you know? And uh, it took me about half an hour to figure out who is the Kyab Gun Dorje Chang, you know? Who is he talking about? Because I thought it was the speaker. I thought they were talking, so Seiji has to show this part. 
in his translation is being spoken by the re person who recorded the teaching and not by the teacher, okay? Uh, because this sung at the end means the teacher described how he had a hard time in his early days in the monastery, okay? That's what this sung means. When you see the sung, especially in Seiji's text, it normally means the Buddha said, but here's the past tense, okay, with the S. So, you know, you can consider that they might be reporting what the teacher said, okay? So this is a little bit difficult. I went to uh, Lagyu, okay, see this word here? You guys should learn it, uh, Lagyu. Say Lagyu. Lagyu. Good, it means Lame Gyu, and that's uh, books, special books written about who taught, who taught, who taught, who taught, who taught, who taught, you know, where did this teaching come from? Lama by Lama, lineage by lineage, generation by generation. So there are special books which are very cool. And for example, our Vajrayogini lineage, uh, we can trace it back uh, 43 generations, okay? Uh, you can memorize the names of all the teachers who taught uh, each subject. Okay, so luckily we have a we have a record that our author Losan uh, Yeshe Temba Rabge was called Dorje Chang by his students. Okay, this is a record that we have. Uh, that Dorje, but you know, Chichen Tembarabge, which is uh, Seiji's author, and here's his full, full, full name, was called, you know, uh, Keeper of the Diamond by his students at Radeng Monastery. Okay. Okay. So here we have evidence, proof that this paragraph is talking about the speaker. Okay. So you guys. Luckily, we have John Brady, and we have friends all over the world, especially in Russia speaking countries, who are supporting this database. And because of that database, we, we can be very, very accurate. Our, our translations can be very, very accurate. So I actually found several places where he is referred to as Dorje Chang. See, here's another one. This is a different book, okay? And this is a section on the, the lineages for the Bodhisattva teachings, okay? Now, here's a lineage for the secret teachings. And again, our author is called Dorje Chang. Okay, cool. And that's a lot of work by your grandpa. All right, Seiji, we're ready to go. Next verse. Please read. Chawa. Shan Cho Chela Tre Shun Chi Ta Tung To Tung Che La Ku Chok Zu Jo Rem. Okay, cool. Uh, by the way, this language is very, very ancient. Uh, very, very ancient. It's uh, exactly 1,000 years old. 1,000 years ago, Tibet just got their alphabet. They just started writing. So the, the language is very, very old and very, very difficult. So we are depending on the, the lecture that was given by Chichen Tembarabge. So let's go directly to the commentary and let's not worry about the root text yet because it's too difficult to read, okay? Please read this paragraph. Ben Kramer, you're still yelling at Seiji. Okay, it's a pleasure. Indeed. Shepani Lama Tang Chok So Kang Lang Tokmar Tak Che Sam Yang Che Long Me Par Che Suwa Chua 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 Tang Tron Ji Chepa Sok Sang Cho Chewar Chepa Yin Pala. Good. Okay. This is talking, this verse is talking about how we choose our friends and how we choose our lamas, okay? How we choose our teachers and how we choose our, our lamas, you know? I had a person come up to me and said, I took refuge, you know? 
And I said, well, that's great. You know, how did you take refuge? They said, oh, I have a refuge name also. I said, wow, that's wonderful, you know? And they said, uh, I said, how did you get it? And they said, I saw a monk in the airport, you know? Like I was traveling through Thailand or something and I saw a, a Lama, a Tibetan Lama in the airport. So I went up to him, we talked for five minutes and he gave me my refuge vows, you know, and my refuge name. And I said, well, what's his name? He said, I don't know, okay? so. This is criticizing this kind of, uh, this line is, you know, you have to check the teacher before you commit to the teacher. You know, uh, Atisha, in fact, checked his teacher for how long? I don't know. Half years? Yeah, like years, you know, he didn't accept him as a teacher, so you have to check out the teacher. Uh, Lama, Lama means choose your Lamas carefully. Chok means what? Chokpo. Choose your friends, uh, okay? At the beginning, okay? Pokemon means in the beginning when we first met them. Takje means checking them, okay? Is this a good teacher? Do they have a good reputation? Talk to their students, check the newspapers, check online, see if they've done anything bad. Uh, make sure they're a good person, okay? Takje means you should check them before you become their student. Uh, then some means even for a minute, okay? Just a little bit. You che long me means you think you don't have time. You don't take the time. Long means take the time, okay? So che long me par means uh, you don't take one day or two days or, or two years to check this teacher. Are they a good person? Do they have a good reputation? Are they, do they understand the subject? You know, do they have compassion? Mepar, uh, without doing that, Cheshua, $20. You asked them for Dharma. Yeah, good. We're uh, shopping. We're yes. collected another $20. Yeah, got that. Stupid guy. Okay, sorry. Chishua means uh, you request the Dharma. You go to them and you request Dharma teachings, okay? But you didn't check them. You didn't take five minutes to check, are they a good teacher? Or have, do they have a good morality? You didn't check, okay? Shua. By the way, you ask them for Dharma refers to the Lama, okay? It refers back to Lama because you don't ask friends. You see what I mean, Seiji? So there's two objects here, lamas and friends. In the first case, you ask them for teachings uh, without checking them, okay? Or in the second case, which is with the- Friends. Friends. Dong ji chepa, this ji means you get close to them, okay? Nog ji means, uh, you know, you become their buddies. Ji uh, means to get used to something, right? Uh, it's, it means gomba. It means to habitu habituate, habituation. Dokji chepa means, and by the way, it probably comes from the word for smell because if you stay, there's an English saying, if you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas, okay? <laughs> so, uh, you know, you become close friends to somebody and you don't really know them, okay? So, and that, in both cases, that's called a nick. I know I have one minute left, so don't worry. Uh, that's called sandokche. Sandokche means big friend new, right? New friend big. It means you make friends too easily. You make commitments, you make associations with people too easily, okay? Uh, you should check them out first, okay? Before you make a friend, before you ask someone to be your llama, uh, check them out first, okay? Uh, my brother, uh, he went to university in Hawaii. He was a great scholar and a, a great oceanographer. And he met some bad people and they got into drugs and they got into guns and later he was killed, you know? Uh, and he didn't check are these good people, are, are these good friends? 
uh, are these moral people? Uh, so that's the advice in Sage's text right here. Don't make friends immediately. Check the other person out, okay? And don't ask a llama for teaching until you check out their behavior and you check out what they're teaching. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, now, at the end of every Mixed Nuts class, uh, we do a prayer and we send the karma. We, get, we give away this cool karma that we made. So you ready, Seiji? Here we go. Sashi Puki Idam Guru Ratnamandala Kam Nuyatayami Gewa di Kyu Sanam Yeshe Sukshin Sunam Yeshe Lejungwe Dampa Kuni Toparsho. So, Seiji, if you had to summarize your text today, like you're giving advice to these people listening, what will you say? Well, to take the time to, uh, since this is very precious, um, your mind is such a precious thing and your time, to take the time um, to check the teacher and, and who you, you um, surround yourself with, right. if your objective is to, to um, progress spiritually. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Seiji. Thank you for doing this text. It's it's an extremely beautiful text. Okay. Nick, what, what do we do now? Well, we have a 10-minute break. Okay. Um, and then up is, let's see, 